The Federal Ration Stockpile is one of the first dungeons the sole survivor finds in the Commonwealth. Raiders have taken over the stockpile and fortified the exterior. To break inside, you have to fight through half a dozen raiders and a couple of turrets. There's a set of power armor in one of the truck beds, so even if you have a set of power armor you like, don't forget to get the fusion core. The stockpile itself is a rich place to loot. Here you can find a plethora of steel and aluminum, perfect for power armor repairs. There's also plenty of purified water for those of you playing on survival mode. You can unlock a large door by hacking a terminal and inside you'll find plenty of ammunition. But when you wind your way through the bowels of the facility, you find tunnels that are occupied by raiders. Towards the end of the tunnels, you find a room filled with three or four raiders, one of whom is named Red Tourette. She attacks you as soon as she sees you, forcing you to kill her. Red Tourette had a little elevated platform that she used as a bedroom. You find lots of food and ammunition lying next to her bed, as well as a terminal. This terminal tells you more about Red Tourette and her raider gang here at the stockpile. We learn that a rival raider gang from the Beantown Brewery has been sending expeditions to loot the stockpile of all of its food. Red and her sister Lily have been working hard to keep the Beantown Brewery Raiders at bay. But in their last raid, they kidnapped Lily Tourette, Red's sister. Soon after, Red starts to get letters from Lily. We find out that the leader of the Beantown Brewery Raiders is a man named Tower Tom. He's using Lily to extort food from Red. In order to keep her sister alive, Red sends Tower Tom and his goons some food, but then she starts to get some confusing letters from Lily. Lily refers to Red by Red, which apparently Red doesn't like. Maybe Red is her nickname and not one that she particularly likes. Red speculates that something has happened to Lily, and she was just about to send an expedition to go and retrieve Lily when you, the sole survivor, arrived and wiped them out. If you check out the coffee table near the terminal, you find three handwritten notes, as well as a U.S. Covert Operations Manual face paint fundamentals, which opens up new face paint options at your local surgery center. The handwritten notes corroborate what we find in the terminal. The first one says, don't worry, sis, and it's apologetic. Lily is ashamed that she got kidnapped by Tower Tom and his goons, and she urges Red not to send those raiders any food. But the tone of the next two letters are completely different. The next one says, to my big sister Red, a name Red Tourette knows that Lily would never call her. And it's pretty complimentary towards Tower Tom. It says that Tom is an intimidating guy, he's really scary, and it plays the sympathy card. Think of your sister, me, it says. The next note, red, it's Lily, is even more blatant. In this one, Lily is apparently complaining about deviled eggs. It's doubtful that Tower Tom would be giving very much food to Lily. His gang would probably consume most of it. So why is Lily complaining about deviled eggs? You'd think she'd be happy to get any food at all. In this letter, she practically threatens her own sister to send better quality food or else she might be killed. Clearly, these last two letters were not written by Lily. This is what sent the alarm bells going off in Red's head, which is why she was getting ready to send an expedition to Beantown Brewery. So, that begs the question, what ever happened to Lily Tourette? To find out, we need to go to the Beantown Brewery to check in with Tower Tom to see what's been going on. Beantown Brewery is west of the Institute, just across the bridge towards downtown Boston. Like the stockpile, the brewery is swarming with raiders. You're gonna have a bit of a fight ahead of you to get to Tower Tom. Tower Tom is in a little room on scaffolding towards the top of the brewery. He has a clear line of sight towards every entrance, so unless you sneak in, you'll probably be attacked by him as soon as you arrive. Once you kill Tower Tom and all of the raiders, you notice that none of them are named Lily Tourette. We also don't find her body here. Where did she go? 
Well, if you check the terminal inside Tower Tom's room, we find a series of entries similar to Red Tourette's. We learn a bit more about Tower Tom's motivations for raiding the stockpile to begin with. Apparently, they have a lot of booze here at the Beantown Brewery, but very little food. Because they're so low on food, he actually sends one of his minions named Sparta to the BADTFL regional office in search of food and supplies. Apparently, he can't wait for Sparta to return because before she does, he mounts an attack on the Federal Ration Stockpile to steal as much food as he can from Lily and Red Tourette. However, he doesn't fare well. Apparently, Lily and Red put up quite a fight and Tower Tom loses half of his men during that battle. But luckily enough, one of his goons kidnapped two of Red Tourette's gang members, one of whom turned out to be Lily. What's creepy about this is Tower Tom only learns that it's Lily when one of his own goons brings Lily to his private room, whereupon he recognizes her. What was this raider doing bringing a female kidnapped raider to Tower Tom's room? I suppose we can only imagine. Tower Tom convinces Lily to send her sister Red a letter, and it works, they get their first shipment of food. But in his fifth note, we find out that Tower Tom makes a mistake. Apparently, he had chained Lily to the floor of his bedroom. But one night while Tower Tom was sleeping, Lily managed to escape, and she attacked Tower Tom, apparently to get revenge for everything he had done to her. Tower Tom wakes up in a frenzy and shoots wildly. He thinks he's shooting her in the foot, but he accidentally kills Lily Tourette. This is a huge problem because Tom knows that Lily is his only source of food. So he comes up with a plan. He tells his goons that there's a local caravan filled with all sorts of goodies and sends them out to capture it. Only there isn't a caravan, he's lying. While they're gone, he takes Lily's body and places it in one of the brewery vats. What's most disgusting about this is he actually says that her decomposing body makes the beer taste better. Ugh. The terminal ends up by saying that Red's dead. Tom's scouts have discovered that you, the sole survivor, have gone through and killed Red Tourette and her entire raider gang. He expresses concern that you might do the same, but also has plans to go and loot the facility. What's interesting about this last terminal entry is that if you discover Tower Tom first and kill all of them and then go back to the Federal Ration Stockpile and kill Red Tourette, her terminal updates with the note saying, Tower Tom is dead. These raider terminals respond differently based on your actions. Tower Tom says that now the Tourette sisters have been dealt with, he wants to set his eyes on two other raider gangs, the raiders at the Corvega assembly plant and at the DB Technical High School. This is a handy way to find out where two more raider gangs are based. But those gangs are videos for another day. So, we know that Lily Tourette was killed and that her body was placed in one of these brewing vats. I toggled the free cam and inspected the inside of each of the vats inside Beantown Brewery, hoping that Bethesda had taken the time to place her corpse in one of the vats, but that was not the case. I couldn't actually find the body of Lily Tourette. So that's the end of the Beantown Brewery Raider Gangs, except Tower Tom said in his first note that he sent a food expedition gang to the BADTFL regional office, headed by a raider named Sparta. Well, if we are to be thorough and completely kill this raider gang, we might as well head on over to the regional office and eliminate Sparta and her goons. Before you leave the brewery, make sure that you get Picket Fences issue number one, which is on the floor next to Tower Tom's mattress. This magazine allows you to build picket fences at your settlements. The office is guarded by two raiders outside, which are fairly easily disposed of. When you enter the office, you see two raiders hiding behind an overturned desk being attacked by a ceiling-mounted turret. Apparently, Sparta and her gang has had a bit of a problem with the office's pre-war defenses. This gives you a great opportunity to take out these two raiders quickly while they're hiding before rounding the corner to deal with the turret. The regional office is filled with a lot of ammunition and even a fat man. It's a great place to hit earlier on in the game when you need to stockpile as much ammo as you can. 
you may want to wait to raid the regional office until you have Nick Valentine with you and you're already on his companion quest to deal with Eddie Winter. Because this location reveals a lot of the backstory behind that particular quest line, which itself is a topic for another video another day. The regional office is just as dangerous as the brewery and the stockpile with lots of raiders on every single floor. In the basement, we find Sparta wearing the same helmeted cage armor as Tower Tom and Red Tourette. Dispatching Sparta puts an end to Tower Tom's raider gang. While you're here, be sure to pick up Guns and Bullets number one behind the locked door that leads to the chief's office, which grants plus five critical damage to all ballistic weapons. So, two raider gangs are down, and what did we learn? Well, I think this short series of quests tells us a lot about raiders and the outcome of raider lifestyle. In my previous videos where I talked about the ending to Nuka World and whether or not you should side with raiders, I got some commenters who would say that they sympathize with raiders because raiders are just, quote, doing what they need to do to survive. But this quest with Red and Lily Tourette shows us the outcome of those lifestyles. Red and Lily were doing what they needed to do to survive by keeping the hoard of food at the stockpile to themselves. Tower Tom was doing what he needed to do to survive by attacking the stockpile, and then continuing to do what he needed to do to survive by extorting Red Tourette after kidnapping her sister Lily. Even before the sole survivor gets there, the consequences of these actions is half of Tower Tom's gang is killed, Lily is killed, many of Red Tourette's gang members are killed, and no one really wins. And that's the whole point. Yes, in this post-apocalyptic world, one must do what one can to survive, but not at the expense of other people. Otherwise, you get anarchy and chaos, which is what we see. Anarchy and chaos is not inevitable. It's only inevitable if everyone ascribes to a raider lifestyle where people only think of themselves. Then we see unnecessary deaths. But if people try to build a society, like the Minutemen are trying to build a society, then they have to compromise. They have to become statesmen. They have to become businessmen and strike trade negotiations. Sure, one could say that the powerful will always survive, but this is a situation that I think would best depict reality where you've got two different gangs that are pretty much equally matched in terms of strength. This contest between the two gangs was not solved by might, but it could have been solved with diplomacy. It could have been solved with trade. They could have traded Gwinnett beer for food or ammunition for food. They could have treated each other with respect instead of treating each other as obstacles that are in the way of them getting what they want. Raider lifestyle is such small thinking because you're only thinking about your immediate needs. You're only thinking about what you want now, what you need to do to get what you want now. Since you're not thinking ahead at your own future, you're much less likely to have a future. The Miniman approach is completely different. They invest in their future by building towns, by setting up trade routes, by setting up shops, engaging in commerce, forming relationships, building a society. That's an investment not in just the long-term success of humanity, but in their own long-term. It's much more likely that you're going to live a long life if you reduce the amount of violence that you engage in, reduce the number of enemies that you make, and instead compromise on issues, and start diplomacy, and engage in trade. It's only when the violent and the lawless threaten diplomacy, compromise, and commerce that free people put themselves in harm's way willingly to defend a free society. Again, they're thinking about the long term and not the short term. Yes, in the short term, they may be killed, but in the long term, their children might live without violence. In the long term, their towns might live in peace and prosperity. Raider lifestyle embraces violence now to get what you want now with no regard to the future, whereas Miniman lifestyle embraces violence only to protect society now, which will pave the way for peace and prosperity in the future. I still have a lot of work to do on my Raider series of videos. I'll be doing a video series on Raider mods, on why Raider lifestyle is evil. So I'll end this here by summarizing that I think the lesson we can get from this story is that we shouldn't go for just the short-term benefits without thinking about the long-term consequences. Just because you're hungry, just because you're starving, just because you need it does not necessarily excuse barbarism.
But that is just one man's opinion. I'd love to know what you thought about this questline and the thoughts that went through your head while you were killing Red Tourette and Tower Tom. Do you empathize with Lily Tourette at all? Do you think Tower Tom is more of a monster for what he did to Lily while she was still alive? And then what he did to her body once she was dead? Let me know in the comments below. I read every comment on my videos and I use your comments as inspiration for future videos. So thank you very much. Please subscribe for more content like this. I produce a new video every single day of the week. And if you like this video and you wanna support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to my private Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But as always, more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I am just so glad that you're here watching this video today. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, and I'll see you all tomorrow morning bright and early with a brand new video.